Dear colleagues, I am very thankful to the organizers for invitation to participate in this serious event. Today, much has been said about safety of patients. It's our main mission. We have to provide qualitative health care, and we do this. Our invaluable valuable experience is very useful for everybody, and we shared this experience. A nurse shouldn't forget about her own safety, uh, because qualitative health care won't be as cool of high quality if uh, a nurse uh, feels unwell or becomes ill, or if she has some problems uh, with health at work. and. Uh, it will uh, jeopardize uh, her work. I'd like to remind you that all anti-cancer drugs, in principle, uh, they are uh, very poisonous. So they are toxins, potential hazard that may that they may have, knowing their uh, mechanism of action. Uh, for both uh, patients and nurses is the natural continuation of a uh, mode of action. Uh, when in the 1940s, uh, when cytostatic were introduced, uh, patients uh, received the chance for long living. Thanks to outbreak, uh, breakthrough into the biology of cancer and uh, discovery of new drugs that are to be effect effective and not hazardous. Our uh, outpatient health center in, started to work in 1940s and in 1980s. Uh, the pediatric department was opened. The first chemotherapy treatment started to be given in five years. Uh, the pediatric oncological regional center was opened. And in uh, later, uh, the adult department for chemotherapy was opened. Now we have three units, three departments, and two outpatient uh, hospitals for 147 beds. The number of beds is, is increasing year by year. Uh, the, our capacities are growing as well. Today, anti-cancer therapy is one of the um, mighty arsenal weapon that is uh, directed against uh, the cancer diseases. Main principles of cytostatic therapy, first of all, um, cytostatics are poisons, toxic, the systemic uh, action of cytostatic cytostatics uh, have not been uh, studied fully. Uh, the main uh, area of penetration, skin, and uh, uh, respiratory tract. There may be dermatitis, allergic reactions as a result of this therapy. Mostly people are at risk uh, who are in day-to-day -day, uh, exposed to cytostatics. These are the nurses. Uh, the contact uh, of a nurse with a toxic substance is a chemical pollution. The use of cytostatic in work uh, requires uh, the high attention and cautious caution. The nurses should be aware of a danger. The sources of chemical pollution are numerous. Uh, the surfaces of the vials, bottles, ampullas, uh, the surface of packages, spilled uh, substances, 
uh, nurse is to wear glasses even while unwrapping the package. Uh, the feeling uh, of uh, uh, infusion, fluid infusion system. Damaged uh, syringes, catheters, spilled medications in case of emergency, uh, the lean, the bad, the leaning, the biological um, discharges of patients. If you look at the ways how these medications can enter the body, it's a direct contact with the skin, with the mucous layer while preparing medications. You can see that uh, this uh, nurse without cap is not wearing a cap, her hands are oh, naked. It may be traumas uh, by syringe, by needles, uh, inhaling of aerosols, and uh, during introduction of drugs and preparation of drug cytostatics can ev evaporate at ambient temperature and may penetrate the body while breathing. Today, in many hospitals, uh, there, uh, there is concern how to ensure the level of safety while preparing the drugs, uh, the substances, for nurses who are in contact with uh, them. Uh, the chemotherapy units are to be equipped to be the laminar cabinet. In our hospital, everything is the preparation is done in the laminar with an exhaust air with the system of ultraviolet radiation and internal chamber and with the protective screen for personnel that uh, ensures uh, the protection. This chamber is switched to the specific uh, ventilation channel ensuring uh, the inflow of the air. There are some filters uh, that prevent entering the hazardous substances, emitting of hazardous substances into the air. To prevent uh, the direct contact with the skin, uh, the respiratory tract, uh, the individual means for protection are to be used. For example, this disposable coat should be impenetrable with a close uh, collar with the cuffs for skin protection if there is no if the if it's not available um, maybe some um, unprotecting uh, clothes uh, may be bought they are disposable uh, medical gloves for hand protection they are neutral made gloves for safe uh, management of safe work with cytostatics. To protect the respiratory tract, disposable masks are to be used. It should be a highly effective anti-aerosol respirators like uh, uh, on the slide, 99% uh, of uh, liquid and uh, dry particles may be detained. Uh, these masks, surgical masks, can uh, just protect from spilling, from, from spraying. A cap. We can see a disposable cap. To protect eyes, we use special screen. In absence of going uh, down glass of laminar, so those glasses should have special uh, special lateral protection in case of spilling of cytostatic agent. The nurses put on special boots. In our medical institution, we have a distribution of duties. So while one nurse is working with the cytostatics, the other one provides infusion access. It's either port system or central line or peripheral line. We do not use needles for a long time. It provides 
adequate load for the nurse and adequate concentration while minimizing the risk of mistakes in dosage and safety of the nurse. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn on the slide. Thanks to the modern progress, we use special infusion devices with optimal engineer solutions. So we have this occlused with locked system. So those are the systems with the devices we use. I hope that lots of you have already faced it and they are working now with those systems, so probably you are aware of them. So, for example, this filter canoe, to put it into a flask, it has the air filter that retains the aerosol and also the valve, so there is with the valve. It prevents spilling of the solution after you disconnect the syringe. This double-sized canal to mix the drugs, it provides good connection between the flasks and trauma for the nurse. So this locked system for one-time mixing so it reduces the risk of contact for the nurse. The valve to have safe access to the infusion system that forms needle-free access and reduces the risk of chemical contamination. Closed system for preparing needleless connection also provides good connection to the infusion flask. So that means that nurse has dissolved it and she can connect it to the infusion line, providing safety for herself. So the infusion system with automated filling and prevention of any splitting. Closed infusion system for safe infusion of toxic agents. It's very useful in polo chemotherapy. Also excludes the risk of spilling. This infusion tap prevents spilling and safety introduction of several drugs at once. So the syringe with a light connection, so it's also safe. In our work, we use all those devices and the nurses noted out convenience, efficiency, and of course the safety. Another important stage for safety uh, is accumulation, storage, and utilization of this G class. According to the protocol, we know that cytostatic are toxic or toxicological, uh, toxicologically dangerous uh, agents. So at the present time, there are special changes. We're going to have new rules. And according to those rules, according to our current, we must have deactivation inside, but they did not describe how we need to do that. So at the present time, they're working on those changes according to those agents and they include some particular solutions. So it's 5% hypochloride of uh, sodium and it will be mandatory for everything. According to the sanitary rules, we must deactivate it in a liminal room. There is also a special tank for disinfection. After that, we continue utilization. We pack it into special sack or some container. After that, they st we store them in the temporary room. And also we have special agreement with the organization to utilize them. Uh, 
they take them away. So studying of the personnel is really paid attention to because it's one of the very important aspects for safety in chemotherapy. A nurse must, before working with such a static agent, she must have special instruction. It includes toxicology, pharmacology, the international names, and also these guidelines include practical workout of the skills, of the basic skills. Each nurse has her own mentor, and she can work independently only after she has passed all the stages of indication and under the supervision of her mentor. But to do that, you need to do it by yourself. And thanks to the Nursing Association of Russia, we participated into the international project on chemotherapy, in the framework of which there were two seminars. Of course, the knowledge did not fade away. And this participation made us create our own system of uh, education for personnel of oncological clinic. Due to the widening of oncological service of oncological uh, clinic, so annual regional seminars have more and more participants. So nurses from different organizations have practice in our clinic and of course safety is our primary goal starting with 2015 we already have had four regional seminars and two regional conferences for nurses and 453 people uh, participated in it so we can say uh, thank you for the special oncological nursing association in our region. And it all started with the work of this association, all the educational uh, uh, all the educational events and communication with other educational medical organizations. We communicate with our colleagues from St. Petersburg. It's Irina Alexandrovna. We have her. So it's Academy Escalop. And of course, the uh, Nursing Association of Russia. But to to rule, to manage the work inside, we have special procedures, standard procedures. Experienced nurses work with that. Usually those are chief nurses together with the epidemiologists, with our physicians. It's a teamwork. And I would like to show you our standard operational procedure of disactivation in occasional cytostatic spilling. It's a standard procedure. It replaced the previous algorithm that had been created in 2015 together with epidemiologists, of course. And it was approved by our head, uh, uh, head clinic. And also, I would like to say that to carry on this excavation, we have special kit, cytostatic kit. You have already mentioned special kits, so we have the special kit in our department. So let's watch the movie. So a congenital spilled cytostatics is a special emergency. Only skilled personnel can carry on the procedure. We should have special kit to get rid of the contamination. This kit includes individual protection clothes, disposable coat, cap, boots, a respiratory mask, two pairs of neutral gloves, protective glasses, 
the glasses should have lateral protection and the opportunity to wear them with the normal uh, glasses. Also, you have the algorithm of the standard procedure, the actions of the personnel in case of emergency. Choke. Preventive signs, disposable napkins, additional measures, additional devices to collect the glass uh, remnants, bags, tank, and also uh, special devices to fix it, special fixators. The algorithm of actions is the following. <laughs> to choke out and to put signs in the contaminated zone liquid should be wiped with a, nap with a napkin to prevent the spilling of the cytostatic. All the nap napkins should be put in the special package. Using the carton collect all the remnants of the glasses into the special container to prevent lesion. The container should be put into the bag, into the plastic bag as well. It is necessary to prepare the washing solution. The solution includes uh, soda, powder, and water. The contaminated surface should be wiped three times using different napkins. All the protective clothes should be utilized as well as the cytostatic uh, garbage. The plastic bag should be grammatically packed using the fixators. At the end, you should clean your hands. Thank <laughs> you.
The case should be registered in the Special Journal of Emergencies. So, on Arkhangelsk uh, onco onco clinic. when you have collected everything into the plastic get bag, what do you do next? So, how you... Thank you. And the second question. So, the janitor, when she took something in her gloves, how do you clean the container? It's it's not the janitor, it's the nurse. When she took some napkins from the container, from the kit. So you, you've got this kit. Yeah, this, this emergency kit. She put, uh, she took something wearing gloves, contaminated with cytostatic. What are your further actions? Do you mean to utilize the gloves? No, I mean how you cleaned the container and what you have collected into the plastic bag. We put it into the room of temporary state, uh, storage. So you, you put it all. So you use chlorine to divide it. Yeah, we use aqua chlorine, 0.3% solution. In this movie, yeah, I agree. We haven't shown it in the movie. But of course, she utilizes into the solution. And after that, there is some special grate. You just pour it away. Could you please tell me if the instruction is inside your institution or based on some formal document? No, it was worked out in our institution together with the epidemiologist, and it works only in our institution. Are there any other questions? I'm sorry, I do not hear the question. So, 5% solution, and yeah, it will be 5% solution, oh, 0 0.5 solution. And now we work with 0 0.6 solution, and they change it to 0.5% solution. Some discussion. So meanwhile, it's it is it is being planned. Thank you very much. Tell me, please. So, Chief Nurse, Oncological Clinic, Sverdlovsky Regional. This movie is it some educational film? Yeah, it is. So, as for the individual protection means. The cap, do you need to utilize it? Yes, you do. And the second question is, the presence of this fringe of this hair. Yeah, I, wa I was waiting for <laughs> this question. I really wanted to utilize your hair. Yes, of course, we are going to take it into consideration. We are going to remake the movie. Thank you. It's a very valuable note, it's a very valuable um, remark, and that's why we're here today. I've got another question. I forgot the name of, it's, it's Omsk, it's Oncological Clinic in Omsk. So the department we've seen, it's the chemotherapy uh, inpatient department, the nurse who comes to prepare the solution. She gets there, she's got some list of indications, she prepares everything and then she leaves the word, right? So she does not interrupt her work, she puts on the costume and stays there 
until the time she prepares everything. Can she have some interruptions? Yes, of course, they work on shift. So she takes everything off, she utilizes, and after that she prepares everything once again, just quite the same way she does it in the morning. Thank you very much. And another question. Maximum doses uh, of uh, her medication. So it depends. Sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 6. It depends. It depends on the patients because those are the courses of chemotherapy. Is there any rule, for example, not more than 20? No, we don't have any limits. It can be, I don't know, 100. Yeah, unfortunately, it's like that. In frankly speaking, thank you very much. This video films, informative films, are very good because what uh, we have people who can uh, receive the information visually, some people who need to read something, to touch something. On the one hand, it's very good. Thank you very much that you have presented this. Of course, yes, uh, we have to continue working.